This all come with a Mac, yeah, I'm so Steve. Nowadays, bitches try and crack and got them OD. Like how them hoes wanna get it without. And know it's cold enough to charge like a that in sale. Say my home in bars, I'm in federal jail. I'm going far like a general mail. On that note, I got the fella saying what up, the tape what up. Okay, no, but seriously. Um, just woke up, gonna get some breakfast. Got a little bit of cereal here, peanut butter cam crunch, and a granola bar, some water. Um, you know. Hydration check, stay hydrated. Um, so yeah, do that, do that. Uh, I say that especially because we're watching Patrick CC's newest video. Uh hey, before we get any further in the video, I just wanted to take a moment and ask that you like the video and subscribe already if you haven't, as it really is one of the best ways you can help the channel out. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitch so you can catch me live and join us in the chat, and follow me on TikTok for more random content and clips. Links in the description. That's all. Thanks for your time. Back to the video. Uh... I'm gonna go ahead and pause the music, actually. Um, we're gonna watch Patrick CC's newest video. This is really interesting to me. Um, actually, me and uh, Contra Mine, Aaron, um, we recently watched um, the Drake and Josh falling out video together, and it was it was crazy. We it, it blew our minds. It was really well made. Most of Patrick CC's documentaries are really really well made. Um, really like this channel. I've actually been following him for a long time, even when he was like music based. Uh, and now he's more documentary based, which is solid. Um, love it all. But, uh, he just made this, how Zach and Cody escaped from Disney. They are never coming back. I'm really interested to see this. Um, mostly because I'm interested to see what happened with, I believe, um, Dylan Sprouse. So Cole, um, is still acting kind of, I know he like, went to school and was like bo both of them were like pretty focused on school um in their like later early adult years but uh we've seen Cole show up in a couple shows a movie here and there um some of them actually I think did pretty good too uh but I I don't know what happened to Dylan I don't know does anyone know what happened to Dylan Sprouse like he's probably just living his best life just doing his own thing but um I can't remember if it was Dylan whose nudes got leaked I know one of them had like their nudes leaked a while back which is like pretty typical of childhood stars once they turn adult um i remember the same thing happened to vanessa hutchins and a bunch of other people i feel like that was all happening around the same time too uh so other than that i feel like i haven't heard anything about dylan sprouse or cole sprouse really uh they're pretty good at just living their best lives and i don't know staying out of the public eye which like shout out to them good for them uh and like man they like ever since big daddy these two have been like they've had my attention and like my love so Really curious to see what's going on. We're going to check it out. Let's see how they escape Disney, which is actually pretty hard to do. Lots of people have a hard time with that. It's far too common that child stars struggle adapting to a more normal life after television fame, mostly because of the pressure enforced on them at such a young age, plus all their flaws, successes, and failures are publicized to millions of people. Dylan Sprouse and Cole Sprouse are two ideas. The Amanda Show is actually a really interesting uh, like thing, like because it was supposed to be like the, the child's uh, the children's answer for, like, Saturday Night Live. Like, it was supposed to be, like, basically Saturday Night Live. But, um, because it was called The Amanda Show, like, they basically, I feel like, crafted narcissistic personality disorder, or at least laid a, a really, really, um, predispositioned groundwork for it. Uh, by, like, calling it The Amanda Show, having her be the center of every focus, having her play a character that was obsessed with her, um, and like, even like a lot of the skits involved her being overrun with paparazzi and a bunch of other things. Like it, it really wasn't healthy for Amanda. Um, and I feel like, uh, she's spoken on that, um, uh, before, uh, and also they've never done it again. They've never had a similar show to the Amanda show. And I feel like that's because even while they were doing it, it became apparent that this was problematic for the child. Um. But, like, yeah, very interested to see. Uh, and, obviously, she had a very hard time escaping the Disney look, the Disney universe, all that. Uh, Lohan kind of did for a little bit. A lot of them have to break bad just to get out. That's what's, like, tragic. I mean, that's what Miley Cyrus did, and it worked for her. But, like, it took a while, but she had to break bad for a while just to shed that.
identical twins that had wildly successful careers that started when they were just eight months old. We know that Disney actors are often overworked, develop emotional trauma, and have a hard time getting away from the label of child star. All Even great at a young age, the twins realized this and started their master plan to capitalize on the rewards of being a Disney star, only to escape and leave their past behind them forever. Make sure you're hydrated Damn. while watching this video. Dance behind them forever. <laughs> hydrated. Yo, he's looking good. Yeah, this is Cole. This is the one we're still seeing in movies and stuff. Yo, Dylan, what's up, bro? Damn. They really went different ways. I, I like it. They both look great. I'm just shocked by this. Bow ties are cool. Um, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Make sure you're hydrated while watching this video. Dylan and Cole Sprouse are the 30-year-old twins mostly known for their two major hit Disney TV shows, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and the sequel, Sweet Life on Deck. But before they did that, they had some other pretty major accomplishments. They starred as Julian in Big Daddy, yeah. they played Ross's son on Friends, voice acting in Eight Crazy Nights, as well as a ton of different TV roles and direct-to-video films. Not only were the two adorable and talented actors, but being identical twins gave them an advantage. It allowed Hollywood producers to cast them as the same person. Child labor laws mm -hmm. prevent actors under 18 from being overworked when cole was done shooting a scene dylan would step in to do the other this is honestly why hollywood seeks out to find trip triplets twins if they can to help get around the child labor laws and they would trade off and producers were able to get double the work out of essentially one kid 2005 the sweet life of zach and cody danny callis who ended up writing the show always dreamed of doing his version of eloise at the plaza which was a family film about a sweet but mischievous six-year-old who lives in the plaza hotel in new york city he actually wrote the idea of the show two times and tried to sell it to different networks when he approached the disney channel they actually said to him here's two twins what can you build around them? He wrote the idea for The Sweet Life Whoa. for the third time, and it got picked up. The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody was about two twin boys who live at the five-star Tipton Hotel because their mother was an employed singer who performed in the lounge multiple times per week. While she was working or sleeping, the boys would find themselves getting into all kinds of predicaments that they had to work together to get out of. Zack, played by Dylan, was the cool, outgoing, and self-centered brother, while Cody, played by Cole, was the more mature, nerdy, and gentle twin, exactly the same as Drake and Josh. But what's yeah. funny is, Dylan and Cole ended up being very similar to their roles on the show in real life. The boys had amazing chemistry together because they were one, actually brothers, and two, had been working since before they had conscious thoughts. The show also followed the hotel owner's daughter, London Tipton, played Holy by Brenda shit. Song. That is a really weird thought. They had been working since before they had conscious thoughts. When you put it like that, I don't know, that doesn't sound good. I don't know, that, that sounds really bad. Also, I love Brenda Song. Oh my god, she's so amazing. Who was a parody character of Paris Hilton. Obviously. She was scatterbrained, rich, and solely focused on boys and fashion. As well as the candy counter employee, Maddie, who was hardworking and intelligent. One thing I gotta give the show mild props for is that they reversed the nerdy, smart Asian, and dumb blonde stereotypes. That's fair. Mr. Mosby was the nervous hotel manager who would often try to ruin Zack and Cody's fun. He was like a father figure to them as well. When The Sweet Life aired in 2005, it was the most successful premiere and in London. Disney Channel history. It was nominated for three Emmys and is wildly loved by fans. The these two were living the dream life kids like myself around the world wanted so bad. Plus, if you watch interviews from around this time, they were infectious. They were so lovable. Now, are y'all both, do you have girlfriends? Um, no, we are single men. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Um, I'm actually looking for a Christian girl with morals and values. <laughs> Disney knew they needed to keep them around longer, wow. so they came up with a sequel in 2008. Holy shit. Week. Yo, the balls on these kids. That was fucking well done. How do they command an interview already so well? That's insane. Life on deck. Before they started a new show, they had a gap year. So Dylan and Cole actually got jobs at a comic book store called Meltdown in LA. Most of what they did was packaging, putting the comic books in the little sleeves. But their father always taught them that they can't get wrapped up in celebrity status. Huh. The 16 year olds were kids just like everybody I think that else, holds up. And that they needed some balance in their life. The boys picked up hobbies. Cole started his journey into photography, and Dylan got into drinking alcohol, which would be his next passion. But filming was about to start <laughs> again, and it was time for them to quit the comic book store. The Sweet Life on Deck airs in 2000. 
2008 to over 5 million viewers. Now they were on the SS Tipton, which was a cruise ship that they lived on, which created tons I of never really understood for them to concept. get in trouble. None of the characters developed much over time. Cody stayed the soft, innocent dork, and Zack stayed the selfish jock. But we were growing up with them. We even watched Cody have to deal with his voice cracking, and the boys looking for their first armpit hairs. They were like the little brothers we always wanted. The two shows ran from 2005 to 2011. 168 episodes Holy plus shit. a movie. This was technically they the longest running live action show if you combine them. Fans love the sequel. Some people even thought it was better than the original. I personally think the original was better, but we can find it out agree. in the comments. I agree. I agree. I agree. Like all shows that depend on children, they can only last so long. Dylan and Cole were now 18 and looked vastly. I didn't watch too much Sweet Life on Deck, but I agree that the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody infinitely better. Um, yeah, no, you can't like, uh, like, oh no. There's so many reasons. There's so many reasons different than when they started. But the truth is, they didn't want The Sweet Life to end as abruptly as it did. The twins wanted to produce and direct one more season of The Sweet Life. They came up with an idea where they graduate high school, move off the ship, and go back to Boston. In their downtime at college, they would meet a single dad with a child at the hotel. Zack and Cody would kind of raise the boy up like a little brother, showing him all the crazy stuff in the hotel, leading him into wacky situations. The final season could have been the perfect way to transition into a whole new show based around the young boy. Cole right. said that the goal of this was to transition them out out of the show that way the cast and crew didn't have to lose their jobs that they had for the past six years disney executives laughed in their faces for the idea they came up with which led to a five-year hiatus in acting oh that's rough here you will see a photo of dylan sprout that's really lame they were actually looking out for the entire crew that they had worked with and like helped build them which is super fucking cool of them and for jesus christ that's I mean, I can't say I'm surprised, but I I hope Disney at least transitioned that crew to like other projects. But like, is there a reason to laugh in their faces? I feel like that actually probably would have done all right. It, it's just as laughable as the sweet life on deck. Like, fuck you, dude. I was working as a host in a New York City restaurant just two years after the Disney Channel, which huh. led to multiple assumptions that he was broke. But when you see a picture of a guy who has made presumably, and I'm making a presumption here, a lot of money off of a television series and that he's working in a restaurant, uh, wouldn't that be a reasonable conclusion? No. I mean, I definitely think that that's in mind. Um, it, although it is negative, it's just a negative way to think uh, yeah. for the most part. Like it, it, it very easily could be a rich person who just wants to do something. You know, if he's not in movies, not making music, people don't like to do nothing their entire lives. Contrary to popular belief, it's not actually true. If you actually get to do nothing, look at retired people. They find a hobby or a show to binge or something. We don't like to do nothing. We we like to hobby, whether it's a physical activity or dedicating all mental cycles to a fictional universe, you know? Um, that's just not how people work. Uh, we're also altruistic by nature, and that's, like, been studied and proven. Um, even chimps are. Well, to, to an extent. Uh, not nearly as much as we are, but we are naturally altruistic animals because we are society-based. People can work jobs like that for experience, and I think that's that's kind of the, the way I, I targeted it. If I didn't know anything about the Sprouse twins, I would have assumed the same thing. But what you will notice in the rest of this video is that the boys, mostly Dylan, have done a lot to escape their previous lives. Yeah. They both got accepted to New York University and decided to dorm with everyone yep. else and go to college full time. Dylan was majoring in video game design and was something of a video game addict. Cole was an archaeology student, majoring in geographical information Whoa. systems. He traveled Holy all shit. over the world through their program and even made a big discovery. Cole unearthed a mask of Denisius in Bulgaria. They both were quite literally just normal college kids from 2011 to 2014, focused on their studies and working side jobs in their free yep. time. This type of normality like most definitely prevented them from ending up like countless other child celebrities. Child stars face a lot of pressure to immediately get an adult acting role or start a music career. Whatever it is, if they don't outdo Disney or Nickelodeon, it seems like a step down because they have millions of fans that want them to still be their 13 year old old selves but when you get into your 20s you just want to move on the pressure ends up eating them alive and they make mistakes then it's highly publicized which compounds the initial problem so instead of going down the dark hollywood path god i really love his analysis of things like that's such a that's a really good way to look at what happens and i think that's a very accurate description as to what happens and how people fall into these cycles um and i also think Dylan and Cole were pretty smart to just say, fuck this. 
Um, and it, was, it probably has a lot to do with the support system they had around them, their mom and dad. Um, and focusing on a normal life and always keeping in sight this idea that, like, I do not have to do this. This is not all there is. This is just something I was doing, you know, almost looking at it like a hobby. I think that's very smart. And I think they both benefited from that mentality. The twins did the exact opposite. Let's fully step away from this. We can't exactly. be compared to our old roles exactly. if we aren't doing anything at all. They did stay popular on Twitter and social media and would let the jokes fly. And oh, I get it, Selena. Too good to follow your old pals, Dylan and Cole, huh? This is just like when we were 12. Holy Cole started shit! an Instagram page called Camera Duels. Where no way, dude. That's so funny. To secretly take photos of me and how I take photos of them first. May the fastest camera win. That's fucking hilarious. That's so funny. I need to follow this. What the fuck? He would post pictures of people that were trying to secretly take pictures of him, <laughs> accompanied with comically long captions of him critiquing their strategies. The only scandals or controversies they got in were pretty mild. That's Dylan took amazing. pictures of himself that leaked. Because of this, he gained hundreds of thousands of followers, so it kind of helped him. Then Cole started a Tumblr social experiment that legitimately made some of his fans turn on him, where he pretended to be himself in order to get fans to engage with him. While they were engaging, he was writing deep and philosophical paragraphs on why their perception of him is flawed. Then after one month, he deleted his account, told everyone it was a social experiment, and basically made fun of them for idolizing him and engaging. Kind of a douchey move. Like I said before, Cole and Dylan are a lot like Cody and Zach. Cole is the philosophical, poetic, artsy boy who thinks super deeply about everything. Dylan, while still being artsy and well-educated, likes to slam beers with the bros and have a good time. We get it, you're Dylan Sprouse, and you're livid about games and journalism, even though you can't fight me IRL. Catch these hands? We are as the sun, the rays come bearing to our soft-spoken souls, dancing torpidly upon the frail shudder of angst. Your Insta. Remember when oh I said Dylan Oh my god! He just fucking ended his twin's career! What the fuck? We are as the sun, the rays come beaming to our soft-spoken souls, dancing torpidly upon the frail shudder of angst. I mean, that's a beautiful sentiment. That's a beautiful sentiment. But followed up, right? How is the ratio of this not much better? Holy shit. That's fucking amazing. I don't know what the fuck Cole was doing with that Tumblr thing. That's weird. But Tumblr stay weird. Um, which you do, you Tumblr. But uh, this is brutal. Holy shit, Dylan. Angst, your Insta. Remember when I said Dylan discovered his love for alcohol at age 16? Due to his love for history, he became interested in the ancient alcoholic beverage mead, which apparently is the oldest alcohol ever that can be traced back really 8,000 years. It's a fermented beverage made of honey, water, and yeast. During his college years, he would practice making his own mead. Some batches were good, some were terrible. But no matter what, he and his roommate Matt got drunk. When Dylan graduated college, he was taking some acting gigs, but he had more free time and wanted to pick up a hobby. Oh, wait, I thought that was Since cool. he was passionate about brewing he got an internship at a distillery called king's county in brooklyn working there and getting immersed into that's this my bad i thought real... cole did the movie obsessed not dylan interesting realize how badly he wanted to pursue this hobby into something bigger the all-wise meadery was born which is his brooklyn meadery where he actually makes the alcohol himself a lot of people in the that's brewing really cool. community doubted dylan they thought he was a privileged actor boy who grew up with everything and wanted to take over their hard-earned reputation they didn't realize how passionate he was and how much respect he had for mead and brewing plus he had a lot of people just saying he was another celebrity endorsing a product like he didn't care for it it was just for money i have Sounds to like explain doing a lot that i'm actually brewing it Right. I have to explain a lot that these are my recipes. I have to explain a lot to people that this is my business and I'm here every day I can be. That comes as a surprise to a lot of people. It's kind of wild to see someone go for a much more humble job serving the local sucks. community rather than chasing Hollywood fame. Cole, on the other hand, was pursuing his photography career. Not so much for money, but rather the art. One day he asked Traveler Magazine if he could work on a piece for them. They said yes, but not for money, since they had no idea he did anything outside of the Disney Channel. So Holy Cole shit. took a three-day trip train journey from the west coast to the east coast and documented the process. They ended up publishing his article digitally. While this isn't some massive success story, it just That's shows just the boys were trying to broaden their horizons with the luxury of not needing big important. paychecks. He would go on to be a respected photographer and get some of his pieces published in high profile magazines. But Cole would ultimately get back into acting. In 2017, he got a consistent role on the wildly successful teen drama show yeah. Riverdale, which has been running for seven seasons. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, this is, this is a pretty big show. Also, wow, lady, red hair. 
what's going on there. As well as lead roles in the movies Five Feet Apart and Moonshot. I definitely see Cole pursuing more large acting gigs in his career. Dylan did also get back into acting in 2017. His team suggested that he shoot for lead roles in big projects like his brother, but he prefers small indie films and wanted to participate on good projects regardless of the character size or depth. Dylan still spends a lot of his time focusing on video That's games. That's fair. He's extremely immersed in Dungeons and Dragons and also Hell his help yeah. with indie game developers. He even recently released his own comic book called Sun Eater. My brother and I used to Yo, get quite what? a bit of, oh, you made it out. Oh, you're unscathed. No, the young women on the channel we were on were so heavily sexualized from such an earlier age than my brother and I that there's absolutely no way that we can compare our experiences. Cole Holy has been shit. vehemently against child stars getting criticized for their downward spirals because there are mostly women being targeted and the public doesn't seem to understand the difficulty That's of very, being a child star or true. what goes on behind the scenes. Dylan and Cole actually started getting into acting because their family needed money, so they put their one-year-olds to work. This sounds like a recipe for disaster, but it yeah. seems as if their parents instilled the right values in them to maintain It really does. It's Some crazy. People... It is crazy how well it seems like their parents did with like keeping them grounded and like I can't even imagine how difficult that is because they talk about the social the social Galapagos effect where like once you start running in these circles you only start to talk to other actor kids, other actor kids' parents. And so it becomes really easy to lose your footing and, like, all of a sudden end up really out of touch with regular people. So it's, like, really impressive. And I feel like they have definitely benefited and, like, really good for Cole for speaking out on how it's definitely harder for women and how there is a much more scrutiny and a lot more eyes, typically, on the women or girls, specifically, when you're talking about um, Disney Channel Nickelodeon. These these are almost, um, well, I guess not almost always. Uh, oftentimes use adult actresses but my point is um a lot of times they are girls they are boys and girls they are children and no one should really be like heavily criticizing children ever um like if they're working because like they're, they're low-key not supposed to be working and uh never ever should be sexualizing them that, that should be a fucking given believe Disney exhausts and overworks children for our entertainment. Cole says that they didn't suffer as much trauma since they were boys, which could be very true. That's, I also believe yeah. that stepping away from the spotlight and pursuing something normal for, was the key to them maintaining sure. their sanity and integrity. Although they look back on their past fondly and came out unscathed, we will never get a Sweet Life of Zack and Cody reboot. I'm asked all the time if Dylan and I are going to do a Sweet Life reboot, and I go, no, absolutely not. Honestly, confidently, no. <laughs> and they're like, no. I don't think that we will. Hi, happy Monday. That's Today. Fair. Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely, I, I agree with uh, Patrick CC's assessment there. Like, they're a combination of their um, support system, their parents, and they're always maintaining outside focuses from fame and acting is really what kept them uh, grounded throughout their, like, formative years in, like, that's really amazing. And it's good to see that it's doable, but I, I do think they also brought up some really good points that obviously it's a little more doable for male actors. You, what are you doing? My dog is back here just writhing. What are you doing? Do you need to go outside? Do you need to go outside? Wanna we'll go outside? Yep. Okay, she's gotta go outside, so I'm gonna take her out. Me Thanks for watching, guys. Follow me on Twitch to join us live. Like and subscribe, and I will catch you later.